Hey, welcome. You're listening to the Coaches Locker Podcast with Chris Four. This is episode 23, Coaches Locker Podcast, <laughs> episode 23. And today we're going to talk about surveying your players after the season, something I'm very passionate about. And I've written quite a bit on it. You may have seen some of my articles on my website, coach 4 C O A C H F O R E dot org. Uh, I've got a bunch of surveys on there I've done. If not, we're going to talk about it today. I'm going to walk you through kind of a survey I did for a coach uh, this past season, program here in Southern California. And so we're going to do that. But first, we're going to kind of intro here. I've got a special guest, my daughter, Taylor. Hello. So Taylor is 10 years old, beautiful, blonde hair, blue eyed, princess of mine. She's my second child, my only daughter. And yes, I only wanted one. I love her to death, but I just, Taylor, I don't know. I don't have a lot of patience for girls. <laughs> what do you think about that? Um, that's not that nice. That's not that nice. I have patience for you, right? Mm-hmm. For one daughter. Isn't it great just being the only one? Yeah. Yeah, you like that. What do you like about it? I like that I get all the attention. Oh, come on now. Your brothers get attention too. I get more attention than I would with other another sister. That's true. That's true. So I wanted Taylor to talk about played soccer this year. She had she played soccer this fall on a team called the Dominators. The Dominators, baby. That's right. And did you guys dominate? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Pretty much for Pretty a good much, part of the yeah. year. Yeah. So tell them what was your record? Do you remember? Um, my record was. I don't know. Doesn't don't matter. Know. Doesn't matter to you what your record was. Yes and no. Why yes? Because it could be a record. Could be that we could go to Commissioner's Cup, and if we don't have a good record, then we wouldn't be able to. And you guys have a good enough record to go to Commissioner's Cup. Yes. Yeah. So that'll be fun. Yes. Coming up in a few weekends. You mm-hmm. excited for that? Yes. So, Commissioner's Cup is a big thing here in Southern California. The four families never been. This will be our first venture into the Commissioner's Cup. We've never been to it. Nate didn't play on it. Oh, never mind. Yeah. And so, but why not does your record not mean anything, really? Because, like, we, you should just play to have fun. Play to have a good time? Yeah. Daddy tells you two things before every game, just about mm-hmm. every game, right? Yeah. What are those two things, you remember? Play hard and have fun. Good job. You remembered. All right. And why do I tell you those two things? Because you think that those are the most important things in playing a sport. That's right. Do we get... Let me ask you this. Now, I folks, I did not tell her what I'm asking her. I didn't set this up. I have no idea what she's going to say. Okay. But let me ask you this. <laughs> are some parents at your soccer games crazy? Not on our team, but on the other team. <laughs> on, the, on some of the other teams, right? Mm-hmm. What do you mean? What do they do? They're yelling at their kids and like getting mad at them if they don't score goals or if they mess up. Isn't that silly? You guys are little yeah. kids. Does Daddy ever yell at you? No. Does Mommy ever yell at you? No. No. Good. All right. So we're okay. Yes. We're not like those crazy Mostly. parents. Mostly. Mostly. Yeah. Okay. Oh, do you ever hear me yelling and going crazy on the sideline? No, I hear JoJo yelling and going crazy. <laughs> yeah, our youngest son. Yeah, he does. Good. Or some. Or if you do hear me yell, what do I yell? Good job. Good job, Good Tay. Job. Good job, Tay. <laughs> she plays defense. She's a defender, a wing defender, I think. Is that what it's called? What's it called? Right yeah. wing, left wing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. So she's a defender on the wing, and she does a really good job. So, anyway, uh-huh. you have fun playing soccer this year. Yes. So th- one thing I love about Taylor, she tries everything. Tell him what else you do. I do music. What do you play? A flute yeah. and a guitar. Yeah? What else do you do? Do plays. Yeah? Do you, plays. What play are you in this fall? Uh, Peter Pan. Awesome. And what else do you do? Do you do, do at school? Do you do... I do... Um, yearbook? Yearbook. Yeah? At school? How many mm-hmm. pets do you have? You have a couple pets? I have three pets. Awesome. What do you have? Yes. I have a turtle, yep. a hamster, yep. and a fish. That's right. All right. Easy. Three easy pets. And what do you want to be when you grow up? A zoologist. Outstanding. 
Taylor, thank you for spending time on the Coach's Locker podcast. We certainly appreciate it. You're welcome. I love you. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we're going to get into – Jay, just wanted to share. You know, I, I think it's so important to remember – there was a, this morning on Twitter I saw a coach down from Aquinas, George. Uh, I'm not going to try to butcher his last name, but it starts with an A. Um, Anastopolo, I think, pretty close. But he tweeted out uh, a fight from, I, I assume it was this weekend, you know, at a local school in Southern California. A bunch of, like, literally probably seven- and eight-year-olds on the sideline, and there's 40 adults in the middle of the football field. Uh, just ridiculous. I mean, what a joke, right? But, um, man, I, I think it's – I think all my time as a high school coach has helped me a lot as a parent that, like, I want to be as far away from these idiot parents as possible. So if you're a young coach or if you are a young parent um, or an old, you know, or maybe you've been around the ball, you need a little bit of a reality check, I really encourage you to just be a fan of your kids. Don't be crazy, man. There's some psycho people out there in the youth sports world. So a little encouragement for today. Hey, if you haven't already, folks, check out footballcoachingpodcast.com, footballcoachingpodcast.com. There are one, two, three, four, five, first four of us on there, and there's five different podcasts, okay? Again, footballcoachingpodcast.com. I get a lot of questions about different podcasts I listen to. Here's a great place to check out four different po- five different podcasts by four different authors. You've got Talking Football which is on there. A couple uh, covers a lot of different topics, uh, a lot of offensive topics with Coach McKee. Okay, uh, his last one was the season's over. Now what? Great, great topic. That was a great podcast. Okay, you've got the JDFB Quick Clinic. That's the Joe Daniel Football Quick Clinic. I love these. They're they're short, 15, 20 minute podcasts on you know quick type hitting stuff. You've got the Pro Style Spread Offense by Coach Jason Honstadt. Again, the pro style spread offense is on there. Uh, his latest one, three ways you should be looking to attack the defense. Um, I have not listened to that one, to be very honest with you. But I love this one he did uh, earlier this month. Why you need two plays and what happens when your quarterback goes down. That was a really good one to think about uh, some different aspects. And then Joe Daniel, he's the first podcast. I didn't know what a podcast was. And he asked me to be on his podcast uh, four or five years ago. And so the football coaching podcast, the football coaching podcast by Joe Daniel, it's tremendous over 200 episodes, one that he did a little earlier this month, coaching football in the rain uh, was tremendous, took a lot of real good notes there to pass on to people. So check that out. Okay. Five different podcasts, four different coaches, the football coaching podcast.com. Check that out today. You can find me on Twitter at coach four at C O A C H F O R E. Last little commercial here, actually two short commercials. My podcast home, 8laces.org forward slash podcast. I'm going to have a show notes on there for today's show specifically. Again, that's 8laces.org forward slash podcast for show notes uh, for episode 23 here. I'm going to have links to surveys I've done right on there for you to copy, paste, and use away. And then the last short commercial here, this coming Monday, Cyber Monday, uh, Cyber Monday, okay, that is Monday, November 26th, 8laces.org. I run a huge sale every Monday, every Cyber Monday. I have a big sale. Everything's half off on my website. Not the custom work, not the resumes, not the cover letters, but all of my digital manuals. Okay, You get manuals for $3.98, folks. It's tremendous. If you don't need it, you might in the future buy it for 4 bucks. So again, 8laces.org, Cyber Monday, a great half-off deal coming at you very soon. All right, so check that out, and thanks a lot for listening to the Coach's Locker Podcast with Chris Four. You are listening to the Coach's Locker Podcast with Chris Four, a place for all coaches to call home. The Coach's Locker Podcast is a part of the Football Coaching Podcast Network. Please visit footballcoachingpodcast.com. To hear and see our entire lineup of top football coaches coming to you every single podcast with valuable information to help you and your program. The Coaches Locker Podcast with Chris Four exists to help prepare coaches to be hired for the job of their dreams and to provide coaches with dynamite resources to become even more successful in their field. You can reach me on Twitter at at Coach4, that's at C-O-A-C-H-F-O-R-E, and my podcast home is at 8laces.org 
forward slash podcast. That's eight laces, E I G H T L A C E S dot org forward slash podcast. Welcome to the Coach's Locker Podcast with Chris Ford. Now, let's get after it. So, I was a head coach for eight years, and this is something I did every year as a head coach. And then, even as an AD, I did this of my teams as an athletic director because I don't, I just, I don't think there's any tool more valuable than surveying your players with the technology we have today. It's really a no brainer, a huge time saver if you use something like Google Forms. So this is something I also offer as a service on my website, eightlaces.org, where, you know, if you're looking for a third party to do an evaluation of your program, uh, it's something I do. To be honest with you, uh, the reason I'm doing this uh, podcast is so you don't have to hire somebody to do a survey of your players. You don't have to, you know, uh, I'm not looking for your business here on this, folks. I'm just telling you it is something I do. It is it is pricey because of the fact that, you know, it takes a long time. But I, I, I did about a dozen of these last year, uh, last, you know, after last season. Did one of them by a player, I'm sorry, a coach hired me. Um, he kind of felt a lot of heat from his school. And so he just wanted to see, hey, how are we doing? How am I doing as a coach? Um, another another coach who hired me last year, um, just, you know, he was in his, I think, sixth or seventh year, just kind of felt like he was in a little bit of a rut, wasn't real pleased with the season. Not, not just the X and O's. He wasn't real stoked on the X and O's. But then he just thought, like, you know, he was kind of losing a little bit of control and wasn't real happy with a few coaches. Uh, he kind of wanted to just get it. It's just a way to, you know, take the temperature of your team. And so, uh, again, I, I love doing these surveys. I highly recommend you you do a survey of your team. Um, I've done them, uh, as I said, eight years as a head coach, did them every year. And then I've done, I don't know, 40 or 50 as an AD of a lot of different teams. And I ask mainly the same questions we're going to go through here today, but not all of them. I've, you know, I've varied things up over the years, but, uh, um, again, you know, when schools hire me to do this, I've actually had a, an administrator, uh, it was in the Midwest at a school, an administrator who, you know, was a first year administrator who didn't really know how their program was being perceived or, what the kids and parents in the community felt about the program. This administrator really did not know a whole lot about football. And they, they just wanted a third party to come in and, you know, take a survey from, you know, shoot, I was 1,800 miles away. But you can tell a lot 1,800 miles away on a computer. You really can uh, when you do this type of a survey. And so, um, you know, this female principal hired me to evaluate her head coach that way. And uh, I went through all the data and, and sent back a report on it and sent back the actual, you know, graphs and, and uh, results uh, myself. And I said, uh, hey, you got, you got a tremendous coach that's really reaching the community. And I know the X's and O's, you know, you, you don't understand, but this leadership stuff, I think you will. And uh, he's doing a phenomenal job. So, you know, and, and I've done another one for actually a somehow a school district came through and you know in some states it's a school board who makes a decision on the football coach and I had a school board uh, president reach out to me uh, interested in my services told that that male that man what I do Um, he's like yeah we need to have this you know happen as soon as possible I did it I came back I said dude you got a real problem on your hands you know this it's very evident the kids don't they don't, not only do they not like this guy, because it's, you know, in some cases you could not like a coach, but you can still trust him, follow him, have confidence in him. But but they didn't like the coach. They didn't trust the coach. They had no confidence in the coach. They, they couldn't stand the coaching style. They hated just about everything in that program. And so, you know, they uh, they they ended up asking their, their coach to step down. And, and uh, you know, they used uh, that survey I did as a par- part of their evidence for that. So. Uh, but anyhow, again, uh, I'm going to put links on 
this show notes right to some of the surveys, okay, so you can see them yourself. Uh, one of the things guys ask for sometimes when they hire me to do the survey is, hey, can I see what, you know, can I see one you've done before? And the answer is always 100% no. When I do these, um, you know, these are all confidential. The only person who gets them is uh, is me, is the head, myself, and then the person who paid for it. So, for instance, if a head coach, you know, pays for a survey, then I'm the, I'm only emailing it to him. What he does from there is totally up to him. But uh, I once had a booster club president, you know, contact me and wanted to do a survey. And I said, no, you know, I, I'm not going to do that because I could see what he was trying to do. But uh, I will do it, you know, a head coach uh, or an administrator, you know, school board. Yes, we'll do them type, type of thing. But, again, I think that you can, uh, you can create this and do it yourself. Again, you know, I had another program from Southern California come to me last year. And uh, he flat out told me he was only doing this to get take the temperature on one coach in his program. And sure enough, you know, it came out that uh, in the survey, very loud and clear to me, very loud and clear to that head coach, he had to, he, it was time to remove a guy. You know, it was time to remove a coach from his program. And uh, he, he learned a lot of things from that survey. So if you do have a third party, do your survey, administer it. Sometimes that's a good thing. Players and, and parents will be a lot more honest with you. Uh, I also did, you know, a parent survey, the same almost all the same questions as the player survey. I've done that as well for different programs. But, uh, you know, sometimes maybe you're a head coach and you want your athletic director to administer it, you know. You create it, go in, meet with your kids, tell them that the athletic director is administering this survey. You're not going to see any answers, and you're just doing this to get better. Maybe, you know, maybe you want your defensive coordinator, a guy you're real close to, be the guy who administers the survey, collects all the data, surveys it and, uh, you know, writes a report, what have you, I don't know, however you want to do it, but I think, uh, you know, there's three main reasons, three main reasons I really like doing these surveys, okay, number one, it helps you see weakness in your leadership, believe it or not, folks, every one of us have some type of weakness in our leadership, some type of hole in our leadership that we need to fix, and so this will help you find those weaknesses when players Feel, and, and I do these as anonymous surveys. I do them as anonymous surveys. Uh, I always did that as a head coach. I want those players to be able to feel like they can write down anything they want. Okay. And I will tell you this. Don't do this unless you're tough, unless you got them some thick skin. If you're a weak-skinned person, okay, if you're going to overreact to someone calling you an SOB on paper, then don't do this because you're opening yourself up to some real ridicule. And I've had some guys tell me, like, man, why do you even do that? You're the head coach. You don't need to open yourself up to that. I think that's just arrogant and prideful. So, number one, it helps you see weaknesses in your leadership that you might not otherwise see. Uh, or the leadership of other coaches. You know, there was a coach years ago I had. I thought the dude was nails. I thought he was a tremendous coach. Um, and then, you know, some survey stuff came back. And I, some kids told me some stuff that, you know, to be honest with you, it, it made me fire the guy because he was doing some illegitimate stuff on the sides with players. Uh, and I, you know, I'm not going to get into that here, but I thought it was ridiculous. And so um, it helps to see some weaknesses in your program. Number two, it's going to help make your program better. Okay. It's going to help to make your program better. So that's another way. Another reason I, I really like to do these uh, surveys, because at the end of the day, one of the things that you'll get out of these is, is you know, what the kids don't like. And how can you actually make your program better for the long run, for the next, you know, the next season? Um, some guys, you know, might not be into that sort of thing. They don't really care about making their, you know, program better. But uh, I know a whole lot of you listening to this, you're probably listening because you do want to become, you know, a better coach or what have you. And so uh, I think that it's imperative to get that kind of feedback because that feedback will help you to make changes to make your program better. And so that's another reason, you know, that it's a, it's a really good idea to do some type of survey is to make your program better. And then uh, three, well, let me go back. You know, one of the ways is just evaluating your practice, you know. And, 
and asking your kids, you know, what they think about the practice, asking your kids what they, uh, what they take away from your practices, what, you know, how they would make your practice, uh, uh, better, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's how you can make your program better is by getting this real feedback. And then a third reason I really like to do this is because it gives the players and coaches a sense of trust and confidence as you as their head coach. If you are humble and open and honest about making positive changes, you're going to gain their trust and confidence. Okay, so um, let's jump into some of the real world questions I ask. Okay, on this survey. So um, the first one I'm looking at again. I'm looking at a survey I did for a program here in Southern California last year, and uh, I'm just going to walk through this thing. I've got two of them open side by side. I'm not telling you the schools, obviously. But the first question we ask is, uh, you know, what, what grade you're in kind of gives us an idea of who exactly is answering these questions. Uh, sometimes, you know, I, I would definitely say you want to split up your JV or varsity. Don't put them all together in one or you're going to get way too much feedback that doesn't, it'll be just a big headache. Some of you are smart enough to figure that out. Some of you probably aren't, <laughs> but don't do a survey, you know, of your, uh, practices. If you guys practice all together you know that that doesn't make i mean all separate that doesn't make any sense so if you do a survey of your kids make sure to split it up jv and varsity or the three different levels so i have a question what do you like most about our football program i really like these open-ended questions okay where players are just free to write anything down and again let me let me back up again folks go do this on google google forms i believe it's called Okay, Google has a tremendous way for you to put these uh, put these together. Yeah, it's Google Forms. Okay, and I'm not going to go into you know how to put together a Google Form. You'll need to figure that out on your own. They're very very simple. Okay, but um, uh, you'll get you know the feedback. They make these pie graphs and charts, and it's it's awesome. Uh, I used to use SurveyMonkey. There's a lot of them out there now, but Really, be honest with you, I've used Google SurveyMonkey and then Google Forms. Google Forms is way easier. And so what you do is you create the, the questions and then you send it out to your players via email or a link. Um, I surveyed 1,200 kids at my high school. We had to get some feedback on what buses they were riding, so I put together a Google Form. And we just took that uh, link, put it on our school's website. We surveyed 1,200 kids in like 15 minutes. I mean... It's tremendous. Kids did it just in their homeroom class. And if they had a cell phone, they pulled it up on their cell phone. If they didn't, they came through uh, four different computer labs we have type of thing. So uh, that's the thing about this is you want to leave your survey, you know, open for a few days. But you also don't want the kids to, you know, be able to really talk about it and organize answers or, you know, that, that sort of thing. I'm a firm believer in that. So. You want to get their honest feedback as much as you can. Take all your kids into, you know, into one place. You could write the website address on the whiteboard. Or like I said, if you have a football website or school website, you can just, you know, put it on there real indiscriminately so that not just anybody can get on there, you know, and take the survey. But uh, as you're setting it up, you know, you want to make sure to set it up so that, you know, you could do it for them to log in, but then you know who it is and, and the players won't like that. They won't consider that to be anonymous. So make sure it's anonymous. You'll get better feedback. Okay. Some coaches don't like to do that. So the first question here, what do you like most about our football program? Some of the answers, the discipline and having a lot of fun all four years, players on lifting, dedicated coaches to experience bond with teammates. I like my team. Class of 2020's determination to be great, commitment to winning. I like how our team is family and everyone cares for each other. Weightlifting, brotherhood, brotherhood, dedication, the coaches put in, brotherhood, camaraderie. Okay, so what you do is you'll sit down when you have all these answers, okay, the environment at practice. I mean, that's an awesome thing to see. It's challenging. The players all play as brothers. You can sit down and start. And what I do is I start making little tally marks, you know. An answer like brotherhood, I'll just put that as a category, brotherhood. Then when I see the players are all brothers, play as family, that's another, I'll put another tally next to brotherhood. The answer, brotherhood. Another tally next to brotherhood. When we win, so I'll put winning, coaching, unity. These all become their own answers, right? And then when you hit them again, coaches, boom, another slash mark next to coaches. The team meal, 
okay? Or I'll put maybe team activity. And then the difficulty of our practices and sense of community within the line. The bond between players, hardworking friends. That's a lot of brotherhood stuff there. That's big. Uh, what do you think was our biggest challenge this year? That's a really, really good open-ended question. Okay, because again, you might think that the team had challenge X, Y, Z, but then you ask, ask your players, and all of a sudden you see them, they, they said, no, 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 our challenge was A, Y, you know, uh, A, B, C. That was our challenge. So uh, finishing games, people not taking it serious in the weight room, making playoffs, nobody buying into what the coaches were saying, overcoming injuries, working as a team. Again, the question, what do you think is our biggest challenge? Our biggest challenge this year was having a couple people stars not caring if we win or lose. I had to deal with uh, some kind of sickness, itis, and was diagnosed with asthma. Other than that, it was great. Teams with lots of talent. Our biggest challenge with varsity level this year is our performance during the third quarter. Lack of communication, offense, finishing games. That's the second time we see finishing games. Playing well in the fourth quarter. So do you see a theme coming here with this this program? Uh, finishing. So it's interesting uh, that, that, you know, these kids are answering that thing. Of lack of focus in the fourth quarter. plays Players being unmotivated to finish games. So, and I remember talking about this specifically with this coach. Part of the report I wrote was uh, what do you think was one of our biggest struggle? The finishing games, which came out pretty high. Or our biggest challenge, finishing games. I talked about, you know, how do you finish practices? And it was very interesting to hear the coach talk about how they finish practice because it correlated with how they finish games. He talked about the fact that they usually got off their schedule at the end of their practices. He talked about the fact that, um, you know, he, he didn't feel very good with how they finished their practices. Uh, they were kind of lackadaisical. So uh, it kind of reminds me, I'm going to circle back and see how this year went for those guys. But but I remember clearly talking about changing your, you know, how you finish practice. Change with uh, a different type of, you know, maybe you maybe go your seven on seven, uh, uh, five minute seven on seven period. Maybe go inside, you know, inside run period on the goal line or so. So we talked about, you know, how to change those practices, which might correlate to how you're uh, finishing the fourth the fourth quarter. Another question: What changes would you make to improve this football program? You're going to see some of the same carryover from those first two questions, but again, it's an open-ended question. What changes would you make to help improve our football program? How about this first answer? Stricter coaches cut the bullshit. I love it. Second answer, some new coaches. Third answer, I'm willing to do anything to make this football program better. Strength and conditioning coach. Keep a solid staff. So look, in the first one, two, three, four, five, five answers, it come, uh, four of them come back to staff. Okay, so that's a huge red flag to me as a head coach reading this stuff. Uh, I would make conditioning shorter. Yeah, you're always going to get those kids. Uh, more nutrition and water breaks. Interesting. And look, folks, look what comes up again here. Strength and conditioning coach. Our strength, and, and then another answer, our strength and conditioning coach talks down to us. Very interesting. Very interesting. New gray jerseys. Rydell helmets. Improve the overall environment and friendship between players. The offense, emphasize the weight room more. I would make sure to move guys around to find a particular skill set. So you're going to get all kinds of answers from these kids, right? But look, possibly changing our weight room uh, coach. Interesting that that came back once, one again. And then this guy says, get Coach Blank out of here. That coach, guess who he is? Strength and conditioning coach. Another one here, better strength and conditioning coach. So... It's interesting to see some of those same, you know, what, what you'll see is, uh, here we go, better weightlifting program, more discipline in the weight room. So obviously, and when I was talking to the coach about these results, um, you know, we mentioned these things and he's like, yep, it's, it's a huge, it's obvious to me now, even more obvious than it was before, that our weight room needs to be overhauled, our, our you know, strength and conditioning coach needs to be talk to taking a serious look at and in fact i think he ended up removing him if I, memory serves me correct okay next question on a scale of one to five what is your overall satisfaction with our football program on a scale of one to five what's your overall satisfaction with our football program and then in parentheses it's not about wins and losses but the overall football program your overall experience as a player 
So a scale of one to five, one being very unsatisfied, five being very satisfied. And then again, on Google Forms, it creates an amazing pie chart. And you'll see that 55% of the kids said, answer four. They're pretty satisfied. That's a high number. That's really good. 28 of the 51 kids surveyed, 28 of 51 kids said that they feel uh, very pretty satisfied. Four out of five. That's awesome. And then you had uh, 20%. Excuse me. 20% was at right in the middle, somewhat satisfied. Uh, and then you had 20% very satisfied. So that's awesome. You've got, uh, basically, you've got 55. you got 75% of your kids at 4 and 5. That's tremendous. Then you had just one kid said very unsatisfied. You're always going to have that. 1 out of 51 said very unsatisfied. And 2 out of 51 said not really satisfied. So a question of 51 football players at this school on a scale of 1 to 5, what's your overall satisfaction rating? You had three kids, three out of 51, say not satisfied or unsatisfied. That is a tremendous, and I shared this with the coach, that's tremendous, okay, to get that kind of response. Uh, Next question, if you were the head coach, what are one or two things you would change about the program? Now that's kind of like this question up here that I asked earlier open-ended what changes would you make to help improve our program this one just took it a little further to help them dive right in zero in what are one or two changes you would make if you were the head coach okay and so again you know that kind of duplicates itself a little bit but i'm just asking for one or two the first answer i don't know to be honest the second answer remove the pistol go back to being offset improve and utilize the run game interesting I would change how we don't get enough water bricks. I would get rid of the players that don't do anything. The run game. New gray jerseys. I have a clean, improved locker room. I have no idea. I have no idea. Strength coach. Strength coach. Have a better atmosphere in the weight room. Unite the team. More time watching film. Bring the offense and defense uh, together instead of divide us. Teach old school badass football. I love that answer. So, again, if you were the head coach, what are one or two things you would change? Hire new strength and conditioning coaches. Interesting. Next question. How could I have done a better job as your head coach this season? Boy, that takes a lot of humility to put that question in there. How could I have done a better job as your head coach this season? I love answering, asking that open-ended question because players are players are really players are really going to be able to give you some some great feedback. And one thing you'll see, and I saw it in this survey here, okay, one thing you'll see is players just say, I have no idea. So it's in- what's interesting is up here you just ask them, uh, if you're the head coach, what's one of the things you could change to make this program better? And then here, how could I have done a better job? One thing you'll find is a lot of times they're quick to say, here's something you could change. But as far as how you did as a coach, a lot of times they're going to be pretty supportive of you, okay? But uh, let's look through some of these answers here. Uh, How could I have done a better job as a coach? Explain more on an opponent to help prepare us more physically and mentally. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Fire, and then the name is here, and that's a strength coach. I honestly thought you were fair the whole year, but that's just me. More strict on the kids, messing around at weightlifting. You did a good job. I don't know how to improve anything. Make us work more like a family. I don't know. I think you did pretty good. Improve, improvement not needed, better drills, get to know the players better. Now, that's one I would really zero in on, okay? If that one, you know, that's one out of 51 kids thinking that. But if that if that one keeps coming up, and as I see here, it's not, that's not coming up. Yes, not sure, nothing, I don't know. I thought you did a fantastic job. I have no complaints. More game play during practice. Practicing game situations can greatly attribute to our conditioning. Keep the players motivated. Nothing. You did great. You did great. I love everything you do. Give us more night practices. Sorry, but you did make a few mistakes. Play calling. You'll always get something like that. Okay. Uh, better communication with parents. That's interesting for a kid to say. Also, need more things need to be done with ASB in order to make people enjoy coming to our games. Give more time for stretching. Nothing. Worked hard. Worked as hard as we needed it. You were great. Everything is good. Nothing. You did great. So you'll see a whole lot of nothings here with this uh, specific coach. So text from Coach Steinberg, my buddy Coach Steinberg here in Southern California. 
Uh, my coaches care about me as a person. Okay. And then there's, there's, uh, five questions here, five ways to answer five ways to answer this. Okay. When, when you, you ask this, uh, do you believe my coaches care about me as a person? And one is strongly agree all the way to strongly disagree, strongly agree to strongly disagree. So one is strongly agree. Okay. My coaches care about me as a person. And so on these questions, you know, we're going to ask, uh, we're going to ask the kids to rate some things here. And, and this, this 51 responses, 14 of them, 27%, the highest recorded amount, uh, put down a number one that, yep, they completely agree. So that's, that's great to have your highest percentage. And then it looks like a stair. It looks like stairs going down, which is really good. You know, if, my coaches care about me as a person. I think most of us coaches out there, we want our players to know that we care about them as a person. So when your highest answer is absolutely yes, um, that's really good. And then it goes down from there. You know, the lowest was, uh, you know, there were some kids, a couple kids who said five, four kids who said five on here. So you got answers 14 was number one being the highest. Uh, yes, I agree with that all the way down to four. Um, saying that no, they they didn't agree at all. They absolutely disagree. So, a little concerning that you have four kids thinking you know absolutely disagree, but you're going to get that in a program of 51 kids. My coaches have given me confidence to perform well on Friday nights. Again, the answers on this one: 14 is the first. 14 out of 51 kids answered a one, which was you know highly highly agree. Couldn't get any better. And then from there again, it looks like a stair step. So when it looks like a stair step, you know, one down to five, uh, that's a really good thing for your program. How did you feel about our practices? Again, an open-ended question. How do you feel about our practices? They were good. The higher intensity practices were always better. Competition practices were the winning team in each drill would get a point. This kid said, I hated them. They are good. Definitely helped us get better. Very good. Long and hard, but worth it. Good, but long. Good. They are a little too fast paced. Our practices were tired, but needed to be in order to win football games. I feel our practices are very good, very long, great. I love the intensity. They were fun, hard work, but fun. I like it. It can get tough at times, but we pushed through. Flowed well. So what are you guys hearing as we answer, ask and answer that question? How do you feel about our practices? I just, you know, rattled off about 12 of the first 51 answers. A lot of positive stuff there, right? A lot of good stuff. So, you know, practices weren't an issue at all with this program. Pretty much perfect. Pretty good. I feel like we should have been more scrappy with each other and gotten each other's faces. I feel our practices were fine. Practices feel repetitive. It needs to be something different every now and then. Practices were hard, which made us work more and made us a better team. They were a little repetitive. A little too repetitive. It was hot and long. I felt practices were tough and challenging. Sometimes they felt repetitive. Okay, so there's one thing you see coming through. Another theme here is that they're repetitive. As I talked to the coach, he totally agreed. Okay. Once he, once he thought about it, he agreed, but here's the deal. Here's, here's some time to spend on this one. Um, and then you see good, neutral, good, good, fun, good. So you get a lot of positive comments here about practice for this program. Um, and really the only negative thing is they're too repetitive. This coach is, we, I remember clearly talking about this on the phone. He said, no players have ever told me, I don't know, five or six, seven, eight years. He's been there. They've never said our practice is repetitive. This is something I've never heard before. What should I do? Is what he said. I said, well, I would sit down with a leadership group of kids, you know, maybe a player committee type of thing. And I would talk with those kids and I would ask them, you know, hey, one of the things that came back in the survey is that our practice is repetitive. What do you guys think? Do you think they're too repetitive? How could we change them up? Talk to your coaching staff about how to change them up. When I was a head coach, I got very bored with the same old practices. I changed things up as often as I could, man. Because I got really bored with the same setup. Um, you know, obviously there's things you have to do every day. But the order in which you do those, very easy to change around, okay? But, uh, uh, so that's, you know, that's one idea of how you can make your, your program. Obviously, look, if you if your practice is kids enjoy being there, which it looks like they, they do here. Kids enjoy being there. They're going to perform better. They're going to perform better Friday nights. You're going to get more kids playing in your program as opposed to if they all hate it and dread it. Okay. Another question here. This coach started a team council a couple years ago. So he has the question, 
how would you elevate or sorry evaluate how would you evaluate the team council and the leadership on this team huge question i love asking because we never really know what the kids think of the leadership unless we ask okay so how would you evaluate the team council the team council group of excellent athletes new what it would take to motivate the team good motivated a lot of people i like most leaders we need more intensity and people who care there were some players on the council who take charge but some did nothing they represented our team well. I think they did a very good job. It was one of the best team councils. Best team council. I don't know who is on the team council. <laughs> that's that's funny to hear. They did an adequate job. Great job. Great kids. They were good. Uh, we would have people who committed to the program and are willing to give their best in practice. But this year, we chose who we believed were the most talented players, not the ones most committed. Interesting. Pretty good. I don't know what the team council is. Okay, so now you've seen two kids say the same thing who is it what is it okay that's interesting to me the leadership was there players didn't follow they were good leaders great very good there's not much leadership this year bad pretty poor all right great good okay so again you could go down and you could chart this out and i mean did we have 75 percent of the team say good and great and only 25 percent think bad you know or is it vice versa so I think it's uh, I think it's very important to ask that type of question about the leadership. Another question I had on here: Who was your position coach? That was just to kind of uh, get an idea because the next question I ask: What is your position coach really great at? What's your position coach really great at? He's good with constructive criticism, teaching blocking, teaching fundamentals, football intelligence, helping us understand the importance of it. So now what you can do, okay? What you can do is you can sort. You can export all of this. You can export all of this to a, a Google, I mean, to an Excel document. And then you can give the coach this feedback. Hey, I asked your players. Here's eight of your players. I asked them, what are you good at? Here's what they said. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. So that's a really good tool. And again, through Google Forms, you get some really good feedback. And then I said, what do you view as negative about your position coach? What is negative? Listen to the answers. Nothing, nothing, none. Attitude, could be better at communicating. Nothing, doesn't rotate players often f for blank, a coach's name. I say we did the same things over and over. Nothing, yelling, sometimes doesn't evaluate people more often than he does as starters. When we have a big lead, doesn't put in the backups. Sometimes plays can get confusing and he explains through it. He congratulates us on things we do correct. That's negative, uh, meaning I think a kid wants more congratulations. I disagree on how some of the team rarely gives others a chance to show what they're made of. None. Absolutely nothing. So, again, you see a lot of players saying there's nothing negative. He doesn't listen to people. That's that's not good. Nothing. I love you. We only did drills for small receivers and for DBs. We did the same everyday drill. He can be opinionated. Okay. So, again, you can take these. You can export them to Excel and then go through and say, you know, you can look at each of your coaches as use this as a part of an evaluation tool. Are there any issues with any of my coaches I need to know about? I love this question. Are there any issues with any of my coaches I need to know about? No, no, none, no, no. Not that I know of. No issues. They do not care about players. Okay, that's a one-off right there. We see a one-off. Not that I know of. No, they're all great coaches. No, no. Some of the coaches pick favorites. No. Uh, blank tends to be rude to kids going against his way of thinking. Nope. N.A. I question the coaches are wanting to win. Certain players I won't name that are transferring have already transferred from here because of one particular coach. Folks, that coach ended up being the weight room coach we talked about earlier. Interesting. Not that I know of, not that I know of, not really. So that's a whole lot of no's for any issues with any of my coaches I need to know about. Next question, who's one person on campus who's not playing football we need to try to recruit? Okay, so this is always a great question I love to ask. You never know who this kid might think about. Um you know, got out to the field. Now, what's interesting here, 51 responses and only three kids, three kids named a second or named one player twice. Out of those 51 responses, 45 people said one person. 45 people mentioned one. Okay. And then two kids mentioned one other kid on campus. Two kids mentioned one other kid, and two kids mentioned one other kid. So what I'm saying is this this wasn't very helpful at the end of the day. But I've seen these before where it's like 
12 kids mention one kid and I'm like, dang, I got to go find that kid. Or I might not, I might not even know about that kid. I might know about him. Okay. But when you get, you know, this, this survey wasn't helpful at all, to be honest with you. Well, I would probably look at these three kids, you know, where, where two people say, go, you know, go check out this kid or whatever. But that wasn't a very good answer there. What three words would you use to describe our football program? What three words would you use to describe our football program? You can make a word cloud with this, and that's why I, d I answer this. A word cloud you can put in, and what, what I did here is I took every word they said, and you type all these into a word cloud. Again, using technology, you can just search, make a word cloud on the Internet. You punch all these words in, and then the words that are said the most, okay, the word that is said the most comes up as the biggest word on there. And on down the line. A word that was only said once, you're going to barely be able to read. But what you'll see, okay, what you'll see are some of the same questions come up, um, or the same words come up, brotherhood, fun, coaches. You, you'll see those kind of come up over and over. And so it's fun to kind of see what, you know, what your program is, uh, what the kids like most about your program. That also is a great tool for parents, for administrators, for people that aren't happy. Oh, hey, I, come look at this survey. I surveyed 51 kids. Here's what they say about our program. Here's the top word that they, when they think of my football program, when they think of the Smith football program, they think of this word right here, love. What do you mean I'm not doing a very good job? Okay. So that's a, that's a really cool uh, thing to ask. Would you recommend your friends to play football here? Out of this one, 51 kids answered again. And 28 of them said, most of my friends already play here. That's one of the answers. So the answers I had are most of my friends are replaying no or yes. Okay. And so 28 of the 51 said most of my friends are playing. Uh, 22 of the 51 said yes. And then you only had one kid. One kid out of 51 said nope, I would not recommend my friends to play here. Again, when administrators come after you, when parents come after you about how you're running things, maybe if they do, you take this to them and say, hey, I had 51 kids answer a survey this year out of 60 in my program. Only one kid says he would not recommend my friends to play here. That's impressive data. Did you have fun this year? Did you have fun? 51 responses. Six said no. Again, I think that's tremendous. Six out of 51, 11%. I think that's great. Do you plan on playing next year? Yes, no. I'm a senior, not sure. You had 33 of 51 said yes. Uh, 10 said I'm a senior. So that's 43 of 51 are a yes or a senior. 43 of 51. And then you just had uh, you had 8 say I'm not sure. 8 kids said I'm not sure. 0 kids said no. So even up here, remember we just had 1 kid said he would not. Uh, he did not have. You had 6 kids say they didn't have fun. You had 1 kid say he would not recommend friends to play football here. But none of those kids are going to quit as of, you know, when we did the survey last January, February. Not one kid said no. Again, that's great data for any of your enemies. So, folks, there you go. I just walked you through a survey I did of a school here. Well, I don't want to say where it was. can't remember if I already did. But uh, that's one survey for you there that I've done. A bunch of questions. I hope you wrote those down. Again, I'm going to get these up on my website. 8laces.org forward slash podcast. Go there for the show notes. Again, 8laces.org forward slash podcast. Okay, and you can see uh, I'm going to put some surveys up there for you to take a look at. But folks, hey, thank you for listening to this episode of the Coach's Locker Podcast. Until next time, well, you're going to hear an exit here. Please stay for the exit commercial, and I will talk to you later. Thanks so much. So again, thank you for listening to the Coach's Locker Podcast with Chris Four. Episode 23 is in the books, on the books, in the can. And I hope that you enjoyed this episode about surveying your players. I really think you can grow a lot from this. Again, folks, this coming Monday, check out this coming Monday. If you're listening to this on, you know, over the weekend, it's, you never want to put a lot of dates on the podcast, but Monday, November 26, 2018, Monday, November 26, 2018, We've got our 8laces.org Cyber Monday sale. Everything, all my digital manuals are half off 
one day only. Thank you. Have a great, have a great rest of your week, whichever month you're in. See ya.